So we're going to be talking about the transfer of skills and how you can transfer, uh, yeah, you can just basically learn through transferring skills in different types of ways. So we're going to be explaining that today. First one we have is positive transfer, and this is when the learning and performance of one skill helps the learning and performance of another skill. So a perfect example of this is going from catching a balloon to then that helps you to catch a ball, which then helps you to become a goalkeeper. So this is where, you know, you have the transfer of often a basic skill at the start going to a com complicated skill at the end. It's kind of starting off at the basic level down here with catching the balloon. And as you work your way through, you have enough practice and enough uh, grooving your skill enough, you become, you know, potentially a goalkeeper. And that's how positive skill basically works. Obviously, the opposite of that is called negative transfer. This is when the learning and performance of one skill hinders the learning and performance of another skill. So this often happens when a uh, performer will go into a different sport. So I've used the example of badminton and tennis. So obviously in badminton, you have to flick your wrists, to uh, take any shot. Whereas in tennis, it's very different. You have to kind of have your arm up and hit kind of forward with a lot of strength. So therefore flicking the wrist in badminton is negative transfer because it hinders the t your, potentially could hinder your tennis serve when you move into tennis. So yeah, that's basically what negative transfer is. Next is proactive transfer, and this is a bit different. This is the influence of one skill on a skill that is yet to be performed. So I've used the example of if you swing a golf club in 2017, it could improve or worsen. So this is the, the key point that improves or worsens. So it can go either way, swing a cricket bat in 2018. So this is pretty much just where it influences the skill on what hasn't happened yet. So you do this in 2017, and then when you get to 2018 and you decide that you want to practice swinging a cricket bat, your technique is either going to be better or it's going to be worse, if it's depending on how it goes. Next is retroactive transfer. This is the influence of one skill on the learning or performance of the skill that has yet, that had no sorry, that has previously been learned. So, for example, uh, you're in 2019 and you're shooting in, you're practicing shooting a netball. And therefore, your technique for shooting a basketball that you learn in 2017 is either going to get better the next time you try it or it's going to have got worse because you've now learned this new skill. And therefore, this one that you've learned a year ago is now not going to be as strong because your technique is different. So, yeah, that's what retroactive transfer is. Next is a very useful one. It's bilateral transfer. This is the transfer of learning from one limb to another. So, for example, if you kick a ball with your right foot, and then if you go to kick a ball with your left foot, even without any practice on this left foot, you're going to be pretty decent just because your body naturally knows how to do with your strong foot and your, or your right foot. And then going onto your left foot, you're also going to kind of already have an idea of what you're doing. So this is what we call bilateral transfer. And finally, not much to really say here, this is zero transfer. This is where there's no relation at all between learning one skill to another skill. So for example, I've used shooting in handball, definitely does not affect your backstroke and swimming because these are two techniques and two skills that are completely unrelated so there's no way that they can be uh, affecting each other. So I've got now gone through the types of transfer. The key point I want to make is that as a coach you have to be going through methods to reduce negative transfer and you want to be promoting positive transfer as much. Um, so I've kind of got three ways in which a coach can try doing this. So the first one is the coach should avoid teaching skills that might cause confusion if practiced together. Um, so, for example, if you practice handstands immediately after practicing headstands in gymnastics, um, if this was to happen, then the performer may become confused as they could struggle uh, to remember which subroutines were for which skill, as the two skills are very similar. So this would obviously be negative transfer as the learning of one skill is hindering your other skill. So you definitely don't want to be doing this as a coach. You want to make sure that... Uh, you know, the skills that you're teaching together are not confusing and that there's the separate subroutines for each skill so that there's definitely no confusion for your performer. Uh, the second one is the coach should always explain to the performer when learning one skill is going to help them later on with another perhaps more complex skill. So, for example, a goalkeeper being told that practicing catching a football will help him to make complex saves later on in the practice. Uh, this allows the performer to be aware that he's practicing the basic skill for a good purpose as it will help 
uh, his more complex skill and more complex skills in the near future. It'll also give him more motivation to keep going, so that he knows that. He says, say, for example, because he's thinking, "Why am I doing this basic thing? You know, just kind of catching a ball. This is really easy. Why am I doing this?" As long as a coach explains to him, it's because it's going to help you make more complex skills in the future. It's going to keep him motivated and keep him wanting to keep practicing so he can do these complex skills later on. And the third one is the coach should ensure that the practice emulates the real game situation as much as, pot- as much as possible. So, for example, a passing draw of football involving opposition players rather than having no pressure of the opposition you know, on, on the ball and on you. Uh, this is because it gives the performer the true kinesthetic feeling and the body gets used to the true, li- true to life movement. This therefore promotes positive transfer as the skills learned in practice is directly helping with the skills in the real game scenario. And finally, um, we're going to quickly go over an exam style question that you could be asked in terms of uh, transfer. A one, a quite, uh, quite a common one is describe the different types of transfer and critically evaluate their impact on the learning of movement skills. And this is a 10 mark question, so it's going to be definitely an extended answer. In your answer, you're going to have to, to get the full marks, you're going to have to describe the different types of transfer, which is going to be your AO1. And you're also going to have to give some practical examples to support, which is your AO2. And then finally, you want to critically evaluate by giving positive and negative impacts of all types of transfer. This is going to be your AO3. So I've kind of given you, you should, from using this video, you should be able to do the AO1 and the AO2 just by knowing how to describe them and also giving some examples. I'm going to kind of go over some of the positive and negative impacts of transfer, which is your AO3, to help you get those 10 out of 10 marks. So the positives of transfer. Um, it can save time from having to learn a whole new skill. You know, for example, if you're already, if you've already learned some t- things that in a different skill that are going to help you with this skill, then you can just transfer that knowledge over, and it will obviously help you. It also strengthens the stimulus response bond between the two skills. Um, it also helps develop motor programs, and also bilateral transfer. It's just you know an example of transfer. So bilateral transfer is valuable in some games like football and rugby, where you're often needing to either pass in football with both right and left foot, and also in rugby, having to pass with your right and left hand uh, to match the scenario of the game. So obviously these games are both open skills, which means that you have to match the demands of the environment. And uh, yeah, bilateral transfer is very useful for that. So now some negatives. Um, Performers can respond incorrectly to similar stimuli uh, from a different skill. So, you know, that's kind of, for example, like the badminton tennis example I used earlier. If the, the ball is coming at you in tennis, but you're used to playing badminton and you've got to hit it in a certain technique, that technique may not be right for tennis because um, you're used to doing it from badminton. So that can obviously be a negative or transfer. Um, performer can confuse subroutines between skills, which I spoke a little bit about before, which is also obviously not a very good thing about transfer. Um, negative transfer can also be quite demotivating where you kind of like you know you're not realizing that because one skill is having a negative impact on a new skill you're kind of having to find yourself relearn things that you thought were quite basic to match different stim- stimuli from different skills and sports and also negative transfer can occur unless original skill is very well learned and very well grooved and that you know it's just specific for that skill which can obviously also be quite demotivating um so yeah, that's going to be it for this video about transfer, and I hope it was helpful.